All right, welcome back to another video. So today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I put these wheels and tires on my 2010 Honda Ridgeline. This applies to all generation one Ridgelines. All right, so I wanted to put black steel wheels on my Ridgeline and some better all-terrain tires. So I did a lot of research looking for a set of wheels that I would really like and I came up pretty much empty because the off or the size of the bolt pattern on the ridge on 5x120 it's kind of a weird size and it's not really a normal truck or SUV size so they don't make a whole lot of great wheels for the ridge line. So I bought some wheels that weren't really meant to go on the ridge line and this video is going to be to show you how I made them work on the ridge line without using any spacers and also how I, what tires I used, in this case, to be a Goodrich All-Terrain TAs, and what I had to do to make them fit. Because you'd be surprised, these are the stock size 245, 65 R17s, and they did rub on a full turn. So I'll show you what I did to eliminate the rubbing as well. It's a big problem with these ridge lines. Honda really gave us no room to work when it comes to installing different tires or wheels in this case. And the reason that they rubbed with the stock size tires is because these wheels moved everything out a little bit because they have a zero offset, which pushed it out. And just pushing it out, when you turn the wheel this way, it made it contact down in this area here. So if you like the way this looks, be sure to watch the rest of the video. I show you step by step how to put this wheel and tire setup on your ridge line, and there'll be links in the description to everything that I used. So what are these Krager? They're 3978834 is the part number. You can see right here. They're 17 by 8, 5 by 4.75 bolt pattern. The style is soft 8. Like I said, offset zero, backspacing four and a half inches. They make these also in a 17 by nine, but that would just push them out even further outside of the truck. And I really didn't want that look. So I'll get one out and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here, <clears throat> just a steel wheel, holes in it. Um, one issue with these wheels that I noticed is that the uh, holes for the lugs to go through are not uh, wide enough, so or they're not big enough. So I needed to ream these out to a 5 8 inch hole. One other thing we have to worry about is the hub size. So on the ridge line, it is a 64.1 millimeter hub bore diameter, which is smaller than this. This is a uh, like 83.85 millimeter hole which is kind of standard it's like 3.1 or 3.3 inches it's a standard size for a lot of american cars some of the older cars on wheels like this so some people just bolt the wheels straight on not worry about it it's bigger they don't worry about it the problem with that is if the wheel is not perfectly absolutely perfectly centered um, it can cause vibrations at higher speed on the highway so um, some people say the lug nuts are what centers the wheel you know there's a lot of discussion on that I'm not going to take any chances with that because I don't want any vibrations. So I bought a set of adapters, and you can get them in metal or plastic. Um, they are, it is a very hard plastic. I'll show you here in a minute. But what that does is that uh, adapts the center on the ridge line, and then it adapts the center on here. That way you know when you put the wheel on, it's perfectly centered, and then you can just bolt it down. All right, so how I'm modifying the wheels is I bought a good set of DeWalt bits. And I've got, like I said, a 9 16 and a 5 8 I bought two of the 5 8 just in case this one gets destroyed because that's the ultimate size that we're trying to make it to. And we're doing four wheels. And you really wanted to do this slowly. And you need to use some good uh, cutting oil or just motor oil if that's all you got because... Otherwise, you will quickly destroy your nice bits with these steel wheels. So all I'll do is just spray a little bit of oil. And this foaming stuff kind of stays put. That's what's kind of what's nice about it. Put a little on there. And then we're just going to 
Like I said, do this in two steps. So the 5 16 first. This is the one that's gonna take some meat off. If it gets jammed on you, you just want to, you know, back off and work it out and start over. So get it moving here. Right, so there's one. We'll clean that up once we're done with all of them. Right, I'm going to wipe up any big metal shavings. Get them all down on the cardboard below. And I'll blow this all out. You don't want to leave any of these in here because they'll just turn to rust immediately. I'll kind of deburr these holes with a screwdriver or something. They really aren't too bad. Show you here. You can see this hole here. See, we didn't actually, we did not even really get in to that lip. So I'll just take some paint on a brush and I'll paint each one of these holes where the metal's been exposed just to help keep it from uh, corroding. You know, as soon as we bolt the wheel on, you don't want to start that rusting process. I'll just take some paint. Try to touch this up a little bit, doesn't have to be perfect. Not going to see any of this once the lug nuts are on. Alright, so that's th that. That's all there is to it. Wheel is ready to be finished installing in the car. One other thing we got to take into account spot right here, is the TPMS system. So, um, Honda technically calls for a different TPMS sensor for their steel wheel ridge lines versus the uh, ones with the alloy wheels and it's not really a difference in the technology it's a difference in the way they uh, the size of the body of the system so I don't really know if the stock sensors are working here I went ahead and ordered four of the OEM Honda steel wheel sensors and the Honda sensors all mount kind of with the you know the sensor goes through and then it screws the little body on so I don't have to wait and see if that actually works with this wheel. If not, I'll have to get some GM style sensors that uh, you pull through and just have like the rubber valve stems, which might actually be better anyway. Um, but I will cover that here in a few minutes in the video. But something to think about, obviously, our TPMS system. Uh, the Generation 1 Honda's ridge lines use a completely different uh, frequency. They use 315 megahertz versus the later ridge lines use the 400 megahertz sensors, so they're not interchangeable. So if you get some wheels off of like a late model ridge line, they will not work. Or the TPMS system won't work, I should say. So that's something I want to keep intact. The ridge line is nice because as long as your sensors have been pre-programmed to work on a Honda, um, the ridge line will automatically learn the new sensors. Once you bolt the wheels on, go for a drive. Within, you know, 15, 30 minutes, it should learn the new sensors, and the system will... Uh, learn itself basically without you doing anything just make sure you don't have your old wheels like in the bed of the truck or something because then it won't you'll still see those wheels sitting there so you gotta get far enough away that it loses contact with them and it will automatically relearn the new sensors so I'm done with this one I'm gonna finish up my last one get these in the box and we'll move on all right so I'm ready to get these wheels put together here so I've got a little bit of a smorgasbord of parts here. So what I'm planning on doing is um, I'm going to be using some Honda TPMS sensors. And this is actually the part number for your 06 to 14 Ridgeline with the factory steel wheels. And the sensor is a little bit different than the one you would get for one with the alloy wheels. I'll show you why. So the the shape of the sensor is just a little bit different. So basically that comes off. We'll take our sensor, stick it through the hole here. And you can see there's a rubber gasket that will seal 
against the steel. It's a pretty tight fit. So like that. And then when you start turning this, it will actually tighten down this bolt and kind of lock the TPMS sensor against the tire there like that. And then obviously it has a gasket built on to the nut here. So that goes on there like that. Obviously we'll snug that down. I did address the uh, difference in the hub with uh, these spacers here. I wanted to get metal, but they were kind of a little bit harder to, to get. So I ended up going with these plastic ones, but they're a nice hard plastic. Like I said, the whole point is to center the wheel. And these actually go in from uh, behind, and they but they fit in the center bore, and then they adapt it to the Honda's hub. So. And then I decided, you know, as far as a center cap goes, what do I want to do? Well, you can try to use an OE center cap for this wheel, but then you wouldn't be able to use that, that hub ring. So, or you could do no cap, and then you're just going to see all that stuff in the middle of the tire. You could paint it black, and that might be what some people want to do. I thought I would try these. So, uh, this is part number here. And what these are is these are the OEM centers for a set of steel wheels on a Ridgeline. And they just set in place. And then what you do, once you have them in place, is you get this OEM part here. Try to get the part number so you can see it. This is a special lug nut that has this plastic spacer and that fits down into that uh, void so when it tightens down it just holds the cap snug it doesn't hold it too tight and it will work so obviously i'm not going to leave these this color i want to paint them black also to match the wheel but i'm going to wait and make sure that i like it and everything works with these uh, that way in case they don't work out i mean they are kind of expensive you know when you get the lug nuts in the center caps unless you can find them used somewhere you're getting around a hundred dollars so just fyi but those are the parts I'm using to put the wheel together. Come over here, obviously, these are the tires that I'm using. Uh, there's a lot of good options out there, actually. And I was kind of hesitant to go with these because everyone says to use these, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're the best. But these are the BF Goodrich All-Terrain TA, you know, the KO2s. Uh, so I went, these weren't around, you know, a few years ago. These are relatively new size they actually make the oem ridgeline size 245 65 17s and these are not an e rating rating tire these are a d rating so they're still a much thicker ply than an oem tire on a ridgeline but you don't have to run them at like a million psi So here's one of our hub rings. You can see that fits perfect on there like that. Go ahead and install it from the back of the wheel. Just gonna put a couple of the old lug nuts on for a minute just to see how it looks. All right, so this is why we have to take into consideration when you're going to change the tires, wheels on your ridge line. This is why sometimes some people have rubbing and some people don't. So even this is the stock size tire. And when I turn this wheel, this actually hits right in here. It makes contact with that. And this is a stock size tire. So uh, it's because it's sticking out further. So with the less positive offset, it makes the wheel come out a little bit further, which means as this turns in this way, it's actually out further which causes it, you can see where it sticks out down there, it's causing it to rub. So it, this might be something that I can fix just by, you know, cutting this and not completely removing that. I really don't want to have to remove them. Um, so I'm going to take a look at it real quick here. You can see what I'm talking about. All right, so this actually is not that difficult. So to make way for these tires, I had to remove the splash guard here. That's just uh, like four Phillips head screws. 
here, here. There's one back here and there's one underneath and that comes off. There's this metal, they call it a crash bracket. I'm not really sure what it's actually supposed to do. Uh, it's just like a little deflector and it's only bolted in. There's a bolt here. There's a bolt here. And then if you open the door, there's one more bolt right here. These are 10 millimeter. You just take those three bolts out. And then this, see it's just this little thing. It really does nothing. But the problem is though, once you take that out, it leaves this cavity, which when you're standing up, you actually can't see it, but it's kind of unsightly, honestly. If we look in here, this is like some foam, it's just up in the fender there. All right, so like I mentioned with the, unfortunately with the more positive offset, or I should say less offset, zero offset wheels, it brings it out further. It's gonna require uh, trimming what's called the pinch weld. You can see I'm using a grinder with a cutoff wheel and I'm taking about a good well over a quarter of an inch off where the two pieces of metal kind of come together. I'm going to do it all the way up to if you kind of look. I originally measured to about here is where the uh, clearance problem was but obviously when you go over a bump, your suspension is going to compress and it'll go up even further. So I'm just going to take it basically as high as I can go in this area here, which I am almost there. Just need to go just a touch bit higher here. And then what I will do is I will use a heat gun to heat up this plastic and kind of push it in where it's sticking out. That should give me the clearance I need. My goal, which I don't know if it's doable or not, is to actually be able to reinstall the mud guard. And that will probably just, I'll, you know, cut out a lot of this plastic here and flatten that out. But my goal is to be able to do that. Okay, so you can see what I've taken off here. To understand this is where two pieces of metal came together even though everything looks okay you still broke the welds so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my uh me mig welder and i'm just going to tack this you know in a few spots right through here that way you don't have to worry about it pulling apart i don't think it will i don't think you'd have to worry about that because it's you know hooked everywhere else but we definitely don't want to do anything to harm the structural integrity of our vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and make that up real quick. All right, so here we are welded up and then I took a flap disc and cleaned up everything. Now I'm just going to take some uh, Rust-Oleum paint and coat everything. That way it doesn't rust. And then I'll be ready to lay the plastic down, try to start shaping that. All right, got it back together. Here's where we're at. So you can see we just clear pretty tight. It's only at full lock of the steering wheel. So once we come back here, you know, we get further and further away. So that worked. Should be good to go. So now I gotta do this. Same thing on the other side. As you can see, I got mud flap back on. As far as the crash bracket goes, uh, I chose not to reinstall it. You could reinstall it if you cut out this uh, protrusion. See this protrusion right here? You can see how it sticks out. That makes it fill up that area, which is what was in the way. So I think that's going to work. I'm going to do it on the other side. I'm going to be ready to get this project wrapped up. Definitely not for the faint of heart, but it's actually not too bad if you got any kind of skills with a, a grinder or anything. All right, so over here on the passenger side, same thing. This is the amount of material that I took off. 
the same thing. I'm gonna uh, hit this with the flap disc, put some welds, some spot welds all the way up the line here. Then we'll clean it up and I'll paint this real quick. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll heat the plastic over here. All right, so there's my little tack welds. Now we'll take a flap disc and make this nice and then put a coat of paint on. All right, so you can see, even after all that work, I mean, we're still talking real close on this side. So you kind of got to play with it. So I cut out, so I cut out a decent amount of the mud guard here. Normally it would go like right here. Kind of cut this channel in it. And I put a couple of rivets, plastic rivets, just kind of hold everything back out of the way. It's close, but it should work because as the suspension travels further up, it actually makes uh, you know a little bit more clearance. But we'll find out if there's any rubbing after I'm done. I'll address it. But it should work pretty good. So yeah, it seems like quite a bit of work just to get a little bit more spacing on the tires. Honda really was not doing us Gen 1 owners any favors when it came to upgrading the tires and the wheels on these things. It's kind of pathetic how, I mean, there's tons of room everywhere else. It's just this area back here that causes all the problems. And obviously only on full turn like this. So if you're in a full turn, you're going over a bump. The key is, all that metal is gone from behind there on the pinch weld, so even if it does rub a little bit, it's not hitting metal, which will destroy your tire. It's just, it might just touch the plastic real quick, which isn't going to really cause any damage. So, But hopefully that works because I don't want to hear any rubbing either. All right, I'm doing the final install here. Got everything mounted and balanced. Got our uh, center caps painted. I took a little bit of 3M double-sided tape just made these little, just put it all around a few little areas on the back. And what that's for is for two reasons. Number one, it's just going to kind of hold the cap in place while I get the wheel put where it needs to be. And number two, it will uh, take up a little bit of a slack. So even with the lug nuts torqued low down, this is able to move just like a hair. I'm talking about a, a hair. So it should take that movement out of it. I'm not sure if that would have made any noise while I was going down the road or not. So that's why I did that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these put on. Again, remember our hub ring goes like this first before we put it on. That way it helps us get it centered. And then we're gonna use our new lug nuts with the, the little shoulder washer. All right, so I'm taking the vehicle for a drive. This will let uh, the Ridgeline learn the new TPMS sensors. It should learn them automatically. So far, you know, I just starting off my drive. There's not even a TPMS light on or anything like that. So, I put new brakes on at the same time, so I gotta kind of bed in the brakes or the pads. And let this thing relearn the new TPMS sensors. So far, the ride it's a little noisier, just a little bit. Uh, just you can just tell the new tires grabbing the gravel on this road that I'm on. All right, so I just got done going for a ride. Uh, there's no TPMS lights, so I'm assuming everything reset without issue. There was no kind of indication that there was any kind of an issue. I did use the Honda sensors. I do recommend using the Honda sensors like I did. Again, there'll be links to everything that I did below in the description. So there is no rubbing on full turns. I've tried it a couple of times now. So everything I did made sure there's no rubbing. And again, just a little bit more road noise out of these tires over the... Uh, the Goodyear's that I had on there, but I'm really pleased with it. You can definitely feel the weight of the steel wheels. It just kind of rolls differently down the road. It's hard to describe. Probably gonna suffer a little bit of miles per gallon with the heavier wheels and tires. That's just normal. Probably lose about a mile per gallon, but I don't drive the truck a lot and I wanted something that was capable and looks good. And I think I accomplished that. So hopefully the video was helpful to you. If you're trying to go for this look on your Ridgeline, again, I have no lift. This is zero lift, and I want to keep it that way because although it does make it look a little bit better, when you put a lift on your ridge line, you change the 
angle on the drive shafts and it, puts, it does put strain on them, even a two inch lift. It will make them wear out faster. All right, so be sure to like the video. If you have a question or a comment, leave them below. Again, there'll be links to everything that I used on the Ridgeline in the description. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.